Okay, hi Jebin, let's take a look at this new set. Uh, this is about pollution, what are the reasons, how can we solve it? Let's see what you said. The issue of increasingly worsening ING here, pollution, has been a topic of debate throughout the world. This essay will discuss both reasons for this phenomenon and solutions to it using examples from Beijing and Oxford University to demonstrate points and prove arguments. Lovely. The central reason behind this worldwide worsening ing here pollution pro mm, let's try it one more time the central reason behind the worldwide worsening pollution problems is twofold now i'm not really crazy about that sentence one of the reasons why is because you use something very similar look worsening pollution and now you've got worsening pollution so you did it wrong in both cases and so it really kind of sticks out um you know, and there's like a very small distance between the two uses of, of this expression. So it's not great to do that, okay? Definitely try to vary your vocabulary up a little bit. So let's see what you could have said instead. The central reason behind um, the increasing problems of pollution around the globe is twofold, okay? That, that's just one possible thing you could have said here. Firstly, nowadays, people, particularly those living, ING, in large cities, prefer to travel using their own cars. Thus, the emission of carbon dioxide and other toxic gases, which are proven to be the major contributors of air pollution, has rocketed. Okay. Well, has skyrocketed. Is, mm, sky has rocketed. I prefer skyrocketed for some reason. I don't even know if we say has rocketed. For example... The private car ownership in Beijing has doubled over the last decade. As a result, its air quality has dropped by 30%. Secondly, the, not the waste, but waste is the main factor for water and soil pollution. With the prevalence of consumerism, individuals often purchase things out of desire rather than necessity. Thus, a huge number of products end up being wasted, and most of them are buried into landfill sites. Mm, in. Consequently, toxic substances uh, of the waste, singular, are released into the soil underground water. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that, I don't know about this word surged here. I'm not really, not surged. How do you want to say this? Uh, extensive, maybe? Private vehicle usage and waste are the largest contributors to various pollution problems, including air, soil, and water pollution. All right, this was lovely. It was very good. There's one thing that I want to um, suggest to you uh, in order to, to, to prove this. Uh, let's see. Here's what it is. Take a look at this. Firstly, uh, thus. For example, secondly, thus. Consequently, therefore. So in other words, the majority of your sentences had what we call um, a, um, a front position linker. That's what those are. They're called front position linkers when they start off the sentence and directly after them you put a comma. Uh, now, why am I pointing this out to you? Because this is what examiners um, consider to be lower, not really lower, I shouldn't say that, but kind of intermediate cohesion. All right, so it is not the hallmark of high level cohesion. And for that reason, you really want to avoid using so many of these words. I mean, it's okay to use a couple in each paragraph, but you don't want them to be in front of every single sentence. Definitely not. There are a lot more fluid, um, less of obtrusive ways of um, creating cohesion, okay? And you probably didn't really need a lot of these, okay? Like all of these thuses and consequently and therefore, I mean, it was a lot, it was a lot. You probably could have gotten away with not using them or you should have tried one of the other forms of cohesion. In fact, I did a podcast about this um, quite some time ago about different ways to create cohesion in your writing. You don't want it to be so obvious, okay? So uh, try to avoid using so many of these linking words. But let's move on for now, okay? Improved public transport systems and promoting and promoted public awareness. This is a little awkward. Um, yeah, improved public transport systems and promoting public awareness 
All right, I made some changes. Our two effective solutions, uh, sexual solutions to pol pollution. Right, it's a little awkward still. Um, let me try it one more time. Improve public transport systems and promoting public awareness are two effective solutions to combat the problem of pollution. That would have been nice. Firstly, a more convenient public transport service can greatly reduce the usage of private automobiles. For instance, recent research by Oxford University shows that 30% more citizens would use choose buses, trains, or subways if the frequency of these services doubled with a D at peak hours. That's a great sentence. Hence, the air quality would, because you're talking theoretically here, witness a significant improvement as a result of reduced toxic gas emission. Secondly, governments should take actions to educate the public about the lifestyles which create less waste. Singular, the soil and water pollution would decline by a large level if more individuals began, again, because it's hypothetical, to recycle their old, I don't like this word, stuff, their old belongings, their old um, personal items, stuff and things. These are words that are not precise. And so really try to avoid them. You want to aim for precision here. Uh, and buy less unnecessary products. Therefore, it is possible to state beyond doubt that pollution could decrease drastically if more people began, okay, past tense again, let's talk about con conditionals here, to take public transport, singular, and reuse outdated belongings. Or, I don't know about that word, outdated. Um, but just, yeah, I mean, reuse belongings. Okay. To conclude the argument and examples given, I firmly believe that the private vehicle usage and waste are damaging our ecolog ecological environment. Only when individuals start to take actions to change their lifestyles can this problem be effectively addressed. Lovely example of in inversion here. Great job with that. That was really nice. It's a nice, strong way to end your um, your your um, essay because it's a it's an advanced grammar. Um, a grammar point and it leaves a really strong impression so that was really good um, I want you to work on your conditionals a little bit there was a one place where you got them right but the other times you used the wrong tenses this is also another uh, grammar point that examiners really look favorably upon provided that you do it correctly okay so definitely revise some of those rules um, your topic your task achievement was very good you were on topic you talked about problems, plural, solutions, plural. Um, you developed it, so I don't have any issue with that. That was good. Okay, um, fine, nice. So let's take a look at this about cars. Okay, okay, there we go, perfect. The bar chart demonstrates the sales of three car brands, which are Ford, Audi, and BMW, across nine European countries in the year 2018. In the given year, Hungary had the largest amount of automobile sales, where approximately 400,000 cars were sold. France was the second largest country in terms of car sales, with over 300,000 of them, mm, with over 300,000 of them sold, not were sold, in the same year. However, Belgium sold the least cars, um, you could have done this a little better. However, Belgium sold the least cars uh, with figures of less than 100,000, okay? 30,000 more cars were sold in Italy than Belgium, reaching 120. Um, the car sales in UK, Germany, Ireland, Holland, and Poland were between 200,000 to 250,000. Perfect. Perfect. That's the way you need to do this. Great. BMW was the most popular car brand overall. Around 720,000 vehicles of this brand were sold totally across the nine countries. The figure for, for, well, I would have liked a full stop here or at least a semicolon. The figure for Ford, the figures, because it's two figures, the figures for Ford and Audi were 680,000 and 415,000 respectively. It is interesting to notice, well, you really mean it is interesting to note, that Ford represented more than a half of car sales in Holland and Belgium, while it only made up one twenty-fifth and one tenth of the figure in Germany and Italy, respectively. In Italy, the sales of BMW were, because it's sales, were twice as much as those of the combination of Ford and Audi. Popularity of three different cars was similar in four other countries, namely France, Ireland, Poland, and Hungary. Okay, um, 
I didn't check to see if you included all my, oh wait, we have to do this too, sorry. Overall, Hungary sold the most cars, followed by France, while Belgium sold the least. At the same time, BMW was the most popular car brand, no S, followed by Ford, Van, Audi. Okay. Um, I think you talked about all nine countries. I didn't check. It looked like you did. Uh, and so that's good. As you know, that's really important. Did you mention UK? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so it looked like you talked about all nine countries, and so I didn't bother to actually check that you did that. Remember that it is super important to include all the categories if you are aiming for anything above a, a, a band four. Um, I really like what you did here. I thought you did a really, really, really good job with this paragraph, and I'm glad that you talked about the total figures in its own paragraph. Here, I think you kind of lost it a little bit. Um, I, I kind of feel like you didn't really know which information was important to highlight and which was not. Um, for me, one thing I would have said is that with the exception of Belgium, all the countries, if you look at it really honestly, sold more or less around 100,000 BMWs, okay? And so you could have finished with the BMWs in one sentence, all right? Um, and then you could have said, uh, you could have talked about obviously Ford, where you could have said that Ford uh, sold the most in Holland and Hungary, you could have said what that number is, sold the least in Germany and Italy, and then you could have just kind of smushed all those numbers together. So in the remaining countries, France, UK, Germany, Ireland, oh, not Germany, sorry, France, UK, Ireland, Holland, Belgium, and Poland, it all sold between X and Y, okay? Done. And then you could have just done something relatively similar for Audi. That, that would have been a nice, clean way of doing this. Really talking about those highs, talking about those lows, and then just kind of smushing together um, that middle information um, in, you know, one or maybe max two sentences. Okay? That's my suggestion on how to do this. Because uh, it's a ton of information, really, isn't it? You've got 36 pieces of information here. Okay, so you don't have to spend a ton of time, and I know it's kind of tricky to figure out, like, within the individual car company, country, car companies, sorry, which information is important. So I think that's one good way of doing it, all right? But you did a nice job in this set. There was a lot of stuff I really liked. You're, you're doing really well, so keep at it, okay? I hope the feedback is helpful. I hope that, um, you know, we're giving you lots of food for thought on how to improve your essays. I can see that you're applying some of the stuff that we've talked about in previous essays, so that's great to see. All right, keep at it. You're doing uh, really well, so good luck with your next set.